Um, all right, to get us started tonight, um, let's see. Um, Pihok Gima, if you're able to, Beidatsai. Get our tank to own gear. Cook a cone boy doll. Cart don't get eight more hammer. I tell I'm over door, they get town, so get town, no tiger. I get hired a dog, tiger. Get those on it, though, or they, or they, dog tiger, get dog dog. Cork a cone, but the dog bone go, the on to town, go get town. They hold it by a whole dog, dog keeper. Higher, higher, uh, get take a dog, dog key, and high get up. They own the parts of God, they, the, 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 Awesome. Uh, let's see here. We'll just uh, monitor and see who uh, logs in. Uh, Dan, I made you a co-host oh. in case. Um, so just a little recap. I know we have a couple... Um, you know, Max is joining us uh, for the first time in a while. So just wanted to go over a quick recap of what we talked about so far this spring. Um, so we are wanting to practice and get ready for the next in-person credentialing session, um, and which we'll hear more about from the credentialing board. And so what we did a couple of weeks ago is we uh, kind of surveyed each other, all the learners to see um, what topics we want to focus on. And so uh, the consensus amongst all of us was we really want to figure out and like practice our Kiowa grammar. And so nouns, pronouns, verbs. Um, so past couple sessions, we've been looking at study stats and the, um, how, the nouns PowerPoint to practice. And we've been practicing kind of as a large group, just kind of testing each other and quizzing and trying to practice for level two. Um, and then one of the things we talked about previously a few weeks ago was um, some of the learners that are working on the uh, credentialing portion of this, the read, read alouds, the story reading, uh, want to know if uh, we can get some like feedback from some of the credentialing board members or mentors. Um, and so we talked about if there's someone who's interested in, in either reading aloud and seeing if they're on the right track with pronunciation, or if uh, they want to play an audio recording of themselves and get some one-on-one -on -one feedback, um, I believe um, a couple of our mentors mentioned that they'd be willing to jump in a breakout room um, during our session to give some feedback. So we did discuss that. Um, and then another priority this spring is to continue practicing our conversational skills but because uh, the credentialing is coming up, uh, what, Saturday, I think, oh. uh, this weekend. So um, we wanted to try to practice our grammar and see how far we get. So that's what we've been working on the past couple weeks. Um, and then last week, we got updates from all of the Kiowa language, well, most of the Kiowa language teachers on what their plans were and you know what they're doing with their classes so far. Uh, and then we also discussed the language fair. Um, so that's a quick recap of what we've done the past few weeks, and then the sessions uh, will be available on uh, Zoom. So uh, with that update, um, I'll pass it over to our credentialing board. I'll pass it over to Dane to share any updates or any information uh, for all of us. So, uh, cool. Uh, cool. Um, so... Um, yeah, uh, so the credentialing uh, interviews are this uh, Saturday. So I'm going to be there. I'm going to, uh, we got the place reserved for from nine to two o'clock. Um, we won't really start the credentialing stuff until about 10. Um, 
but I um, kind of like we did earlier, we didn't have a, an actual credentialing session as more of a planning reorganizing meeting and of how we're gonna how we're gonna take this next step for the level twos. So we did get to listen to some of the level two story reading and things like that. Um, so there's a lot that's there's a lot going on there as far as what to look at, but the good thing is everybody who's turned theirs in when it came to pronunciation and being understood and did a did it did a really good job. So um and that was the whole point of that is when you're listening to those recordings, they really do help you um, pronounce stuff where everybody can understand. So um, there's a few there's a few things I want to go over as far as what the how, how things are going to switch up and how we're going to go to the next level beyond that. Um, but I would definitely recommend uh, these stories. And I did just get just get a message here about one of the stories. So I can go ahead and check that over. I believe we'll have enough time to actually go ahead and check through stories now. So it won't have to be just uh, interviews. We can check stories. And on top of that, with some of our uh, teacher, um, our credential teachers, um, if they were to come up. So it's preferred, of course, that we do try to get it, it you know, people in person for this one, but it is winter time, And so we do plan that you know, weather might be not always, not always uh, favorable for traveling uh, as, as it possibly could have been this past week. And of course it was more cold than anything. So that's the reason why we didn't want anybody out. And so when it comes to the online credentialing, I think the winter is definitely the time for people who are out of state or, um, or just, you know, they're just having a hard time making it to the in-person, that might be the best time for them to actually uh, to actually come to these credentialing sessions uh, because it is preferred that people do come in person. But this is because of weather and stuff like that kind of opens it up a little bit more. Uh, the thing about going online is being able to pay attention to the people online and people in person and being organized about that. So, um really the more teachers we have there and there's some that are going for level two as well it seems like there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be going on because we'll have a zoom session going on we'll have interviews trying to get those interviews and i think we're kind of getting used to those interviews now and how to do them quickly uh how to listen to stories because the stories don't go on for too long so we can kind of assess pretty easily uh, when somebody passes those but the smaller things like the uh, say, for instance, you got the family term type stuff and you have um, you have the family terms uh, and you have the the pronoun verb sets. And there's still some people that for the first round haven't really gone through some of that, like the pronoun verb sets. Um, we're going to kind of open up um, a little bit more of, of who can do that, uh, the assessing for some of that. So hopefully the uh hopefully we can have some of the teachers there that can go ahead and practice and take to take care of some of the people who want to do that cuz i really haven't got too many messages of people who are trying to go after the grammar or anything and um i think the more we open it up to our, some of our our, our credential teachers to actually uh, do some of these other assessments like the grammar and the kinship, you know, maybe the faster we'll get some of these things in. Sometimes uh, people have worked with a certain person over these. And so, you know, uh, you kind of know how, uh, uh, how to kind of work with them and what, how, how they're going to ask the questions. And so there's sometimes there's a little bit of variation about how people ask those same questions. Sometimes it's easier to work with one person than, a, than another. And so uh, if we do that, we can do like a short overview of how, um, how maybe uh, how to do recording. And most of these things, most of these shorter things, you're just trying to get it under 10 minutes. So can they get all their family terms in under 10 minutes? Can they uh, get the uh, grammar in under 10 minutes? And if they don't do it the first time, they can always just take it again, keep retaking it until they get faster and faster. Because they're usually every time they take it, you can just count it as practice and say, okay, we won't take this one because it didn't go under 10 minutes. But we can go, you can go 
we'll look at it again. We'll practice and study it, and then we can go ahead and take it again. Um, so that's one of the other things that we can also do is start including our teacher trainees on this one because uh, the possibility that uh, any of us leave, steps down, or whatever may happen, that we have somebody who knows what we're doing and how to assess on some of these areas. So definitely we'll be trying to include a lot of a lot of the teachers in on this as well, um, as well as you're already getting. Um, you're already getting experience in the classroom and you're probably seeing a lot of stuff that in those areas that of course we probably don't see at the university level and stuff that we don't see on the on the uh, community level so uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of new information that everybody who's working in these high school systems are probably seeing that you know, we can add into this. So it's a lot of good information that you're and feedback that we can get that we can uh, think about and assess whenever we're doing these uh, credentialing meetings and these four parts that we're really going over. So like I said, so if the teachers do um, do come to this, we'll, we'll, we'll have something for you to do that'll be kind of worth your while and to give you some practice and experience on um, the stuff we're doing as boards. And some of them kind of got to get, get a little bit of experience on that uh, through this uh, uh, December session that we changed from it, that we switched out to this month. And so we're just trying to get organized. The other thing we can also do is if there are members of the, of the, uh, of the Kiowa language, um, of the Kiowa, uh, the Kiowa language program, <laughs> of the part time or full time, uh, we can probably start doing those folders and organizing them during that time too. So, again, with the online stuff, it it, it can be a a little bit complicated meeting, but at the same time, I don't know how many people are actually come to this either. And the last one, we kind of had a lot of time to do a lot of different things, and so. Um, so we can also get that organized. I got the files for what everybody has sent in so far. And that way we can kind of look at, okay, where do you stand? What do you need to turn in? And sometimes you, you might have the files yourself. Um, as somebody who's actually going for something, I know I've been keeping the files for you and I've had them, but I'll, I'll go ahead and probably suggest this whenever we do a recording of anything. Uh, if you're getting assessed on anything, I probably would uh, prefer you also to be recording yourself just in case we have two files. We don't we don't get them lost in all the mess. That's everything that's uh, kind of accumulated over, over the past two years. So some of that stuff kind of got spread out a little bit. Um, so if you have a you know, you can use your phone as a recording device and you can have a version of it yourself at all times just in case something happens. And you can't always trust technologies. A lot of stuff will kind of, that doesn't, uh, you can lose stuff real easy if something happens, especially if you're uh, on a laptop and it goes out on you. Sometimes that's the issue there. So um, we're trying to find a more, uh, a better way to actually track everybody. Uh, hopefully a folder system in which you can actually uh, submit your own recordings and keep it updated. So if you do a recording, say you're reading off something, you don't like that version, you can take that one out of your folder and put a new one in there. Um, I know we started out with one like that, but whenever it, it came to being a lot more people, it was, it was kind of hard to organize. And then I would at the time, I had to open up where people can submit it in other ways, and it got really complicated because it was getting through emails, getting them through that folder, getting them through uh, text message, and so kind of keeping track of that was a little bit tough, but I think most people here now are, are more tech-oriented to, to how those folders work and where to work, so... Um, so um, so if you could, if you do uh, get uh, do any of those credentialing sessions, if you could actually also record yourself, we'll still make a recording of you too. If you could actually record yourself doing that and we'll try to see how this file system can work out. We'll still be working on that as well too during uh, during this, so any questions. So if anybody from the Kiowa Language Department comes up, we can actually just start to actually start making those folders right there and we can start transferring stuff in there right away. Um, and I'll just I'll just give you the give the files to y'all and y'all can put them in the right places and and we'll see how it works out and what everybody thinks about it.
as far as moving forward, um, I, th I think with the grammar portion, um, I pushed that in uh, the classes at OU for about four, about four or five years. And I kind of, you know, it kind of, kind of made its point to the people in there that they can learn that and it doesn't take them very long to actually learn it. It's retaining it is kind of the issue, but, uh, you know, that just depends upon the individual if they're, if they're still working on um, that kind of stuff as far as the grammar is concerned. So that's still going to be something that's going to be uh, a big part of our, uh, a uh, big part of our credentialing, but now in at the university system, we're going to make a change to that to kind of fit in the gearing it toward that third level. So we're going to be doing a lot more translations, using that glossary a lot more, and kind of the stuff that we kind of see how students take it in there, we can kind of have a better idea how to present it to the teacher trainee area or the teachers and teacher trainees that are going in the higher levels, level twos and level threes, how they can translate sentences a little bit better. Cause that was originally what we were doing at OU first, but the problem was they weren't coming out speaking very well. And then that was the kind of the issue. Now that we kind of see where, how far you can go with that in two classes, uh, these classes, uh, we're going to start doing a little bit more focus on that translation because we're going to need that for this. And we need uh, people on site up, up here to see what works and what doesn't. And at the same time with the, everybody here as uh, teachers, teachers, trainees, how, how can we get uh, y'all used to translating? And there's a lot of people in here that have been doing it for quite a while. So they're getting used to it. Uh, uh, through various methods of what we're working with, and plus we got a lot more experience here than we than we did five years ago now. Um, so that's going to be a little change that we're doing up here at OU, and it's going to probably directly affect uh, probably and probably a level two and level especially level three. So we'll probably at some point, hopefully next year, have a more organized and idea of what level three is actually going to look like because that will get them a little bit more grammar oriented and at that point a level three person we know that they're invested in Kiowa we know they're going to go ahead and learn you know these other areas that are important to a language where that level one we're just trying to find is the interest there and not general interest there uh level two we're trying to see okay can we get you to go in a little bit deeper with the speaking part level three okay now that you kind of got a good base Let's see if we can start going much uh, farther in the grammar, so all the stuff kind of gets put together for you, and it makes a lot more sense. Nora, and you did not do what your dad asked as far as your food goes. And then I think that's it. I mean, that's all I have to say on that. So, does anybody have any questions on that? Your food. Thank yeah. <laughs> you got to that. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Who is that? But I'm done with my part. If anybody has any questions, if not, uh, I don't know how many teachers are going to be there uh, as far as credential teachers. But if you can let me know, um, that would be helpful because then we can figure out where to, what we what we can do. And if you also need level two, anything out of level two that needs to be reviewed. Hey, dang, I forgot what I did. I don't, I think I did the relatives and grammar, but I'm not really sure. Is there okay. a way to find out? Yeah, I'll, I have to check through my stuff and I'll definitely know. Um, um, are you going to come in on Saturday? No, I'm in St. Louis. I can't. It's I mean, are you can come in online. It is, there is an online. Oh, app. online. Yeah. Saturday, what time? Uh, it, uh, what time ten, are you going to be online? 10 to, uh, 10 to 10 to 2. Okay, so all that for, for four hours or? Yeah, so if anybody okay. missed it, this this one, this winter one, there is an online option for it. Okay, so. so it... Yeah, I was trying to put it, I was trying to uh, tag it into here, but I can't because it said it's too long. Um, So I got to find another way to do that. I don't know how to shorten it out too much. Um, other than putting the 
link to it and also the meeting ID because I think those are the main two th things that you uh, that you really need are, are those. So let me see. Let me go ahead and put the sent portion and I'll see. I sent one to... Okay, let me go ahead and do a shortened version of it. Maybe you will be able to get to it from there. Um, um, can y'all see this right here? Oh, oh. I want to emphasize though. One day. I was going to ask uh, if uh, you want me to forward that email you sent me to everyone here on this call. Oh, yeah, go ahead and do that too. As many ways as possible. Okay. That'd be oh. good. That. Um, let's see I, I was looking at our notes to see I think we did have some one of the biggest questions was um, how do we know what type of feedback for anyone that submitted the recordings um, how do they know if they're on the right track and then um, another question was how do we know uh, what portions we've already completed which I think you already addressed um oh and cricket has a question in the chat okay does the office know we are coming yes they do yeah so the district seven that uh, I, I keep i think i keep calling it district nine after that movie but it's district seven office um oh, oh um i think there was another uh question i'm trying to think from last week from um Akima, uh, they she was asking if um, um, what was it? I need to look at my notes, but she had a question about the credentialing piece. Um, I'll have to look at my notes. I don't know if anyone else has any other questions that you can think of. And just in case, if they still have those questions, they can't they can't really think of it today. If they come to that session, we can probably answer it and probably get something done to that day as well. Oh, awesome. Oh, and you asked who's going to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. Judy says she'll be there. Okay. Oh. I'll be there on Zoom. I okay. got a oh. basketball tournament for my eighth grader, but I'll be there on Zoom. Oh. Um, da Bing. Yeah, she said she's, uh, uh, they got Oto and Catmitch, so she won't be able to be there. Oh, okay. And, uh, Tapoma said she'll be on Zoom too because she's in St. Louis. Um, I'm trying to think of who else we were talking about. Um, oh, I know that. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Alice Ann had some questions. I don't see her on here. Dane, did you get my email? Um, maybe. Story. I just sent it not too long ago. Okay. Uh, you sent it to my Gmail account? Yeah. Or my email. Oh. Okay. Uh, it should pop up sometime pretty soon. It hasn't popped up yet. Let's see. Well, let me make sure where I sent it. Oh, no. To your bake cone. Do you have your uh, bake home account still? Uh, my OU account? No, bake home. Do you have uh, bake home? Uh, I don't have a bake home account. Okay. Let's see here. So it's dpula at gmail.com. So I'll, I'll lowercase, no number. Okay, I got it. Let's see. Oh, all right. I'll send it. Yeah. So we already listened to the ones who I actually did their story reading, uh, and we got to listen to a lot of them uh, giving off feedback on that on um, Saturday is going to be pretty easy.
because we've listened to it already one time. So uh, they'll just fill, fill out the paperwork and then we'll just tell you. We'll just, we'll just tell you what. Um, uh, we'll, we'll give you the feedback. So and so far, I want to. Um, if you if you sent that to us and we listened to it already, we, we did that on the last month. And as far as I know, uh, they all went pretty well. So we'll just give you further feedback on it, just in case you want to redo it. I mean, just just for personal choice, um, if you want to redo it, if you feel like like it. Like I said, I think I've done that. I used to have recordings of that Clope Subhall story, and I probably read that over thirty times because I didn't like the last one I did. I, if I listened to the, if I I have listened to that a long time, but if I listened to it today, that was probably like five six years ago. I probably don't like it now, and I probably re-record it. So. Um, you can you can always do those stories over as much as you want. Um, probably the biggest piece that I think I haven't got to do with a lot of people or it hasn't been requested is the grammar piece. Probably the only part that's kind of... Uh, might be the last thing a lot of people need to do. Hyundai, Hyundai and Fatal Talk. One day. Um, so the reason is probably because um we all of us that are on here unanimously said that we need to work on the level two grammar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the question is, what um do you have any study? tips, strategies, approaches, um, anything that you've seen or heard or learned that could help us? Because that would, since that's like the top priority for all of us that are on this call, um, is practicing for that level two grammar. We'd love to hear any ideas or strategies that you'd suggest. Um. So we got the senses, right? You, you do have the... Um... The PowerPoints. Oh, that nouns, that revised one in Google Drive. Oh, so it might be, and this is going to be time consuming, but it might be kind of a collective, uh, collective pieces where you might have to create the study materials on your own. On, on your own but you can kind of split it up between everybody who needs to do that piece and it'll be good because you'll have different voices on there too um basically you make a file whether you use audacity or you use uh your phone uh what do you call it your uh voice memos only problem with voice memos it makes mp4 so you have to confirm to mp3 as well if somebody knows how to do that real quick you can do that um but you would probably um, say, uh, you probably want to say the English version of that phrase and then wait six seconds and either say or play the, the Kaiwa translation to it. I've never actually had y'all do that stuff, but it'd be um, probably good to see the you know, how much time it takes to actually make those. And it'll be good on your pronunciation as well. Um, to make those for one person, by one person can take a while, but if you do split it up between yourselves, and that's something you don't have to do in an interview session or anything. I mean, we could probably get all of those knocked out this semester. You know, uh, uh, I don't I don't have all the responsibilities I had last semester for missing that class. It was almost like, I felt like I had three extra classes for not having one class last semester because I was doing three different responsibilities. Uh, this semester, I should be able to come into a lot more Wednesdays because I don't have I don't have to do those things anymore. Um, so we could probably knock a lot of those out pretty quickly. And as you get used to them, uh, once you pass one of those um, and you know how it works out, then you can start. Um, then you can start assessing other people and getting getting um getting recordings of those because long we got an assessment that where you got where they're actually getting under 10 minutes you can just go into your practice sessions and keep doing it and once they start getting in under under 10 minutes and you say and you think okay let's record this one so that we got you getting assessed and you getting uh these answers in under 10 minutes um 
you know, that's another way that we can do it. That'll kind of give you all practice of how to do that. Because if you have to assess it yourself, you'll probably, you have to assess them by yourself, you'll probably learn it better as well. So we're really kind of looking to the area to have more, uh, you know, teachers kind of assess this stuff that we're doing on the credentialing side, um, just to kind of see how it works. And it kind of gets you thinking, because when you have to teach it, of course, a lot of the teachers who are out there now are already probably realizing, probably probably learning a lot of stuff faster because you're having to deal with it, you know, every day in class. So it makes it a lot easier. So, um, yeah, I can't think of too many other things that will do that, do that other than um, uh, the written forms and the uh, and the flashcards. They can only go so far, but they don't kind of force you into doing it real fast. It's really those recordings, and i just uh, trying to think if I even have versions of them that are from English to that are from English to Kiowa. I used to, and I don't. I did lose a file about two years ago that used to have those. Um, but I know it takes a lot of time to do that. So if you have any questions, maybe uh, after this session next week, we can go in. I can teach you how to actually make those kind of recordings because those are probably the most effective. As far as my students are concerned, when I was talking to them last semester, um, when they said something helped them the most, they did say that those those uh, space six second recording type things are good. But they had to, uh, I used to make them do them, but now I just make them for them. Um, but I haven't done it this way in a while because I was doing some changes with my classes, so I didn't make a new set for them. Um, but if you have any questions on how to make that tonight or tomorrow, and you want to make a set for yourself, I would, I would, I would suggest it. Uh, just so you know how long it takes to make those, and then it also helps you in the long run because you got something with your voice on it as well, and so it gives you pronunciation practice. So, uh, just let me know when you want to start making those practice recordings. So like I said, now we got a bunch of teachers in there, so I guess it's good to start getting everybody to start making parts of those materials and because it'll it'll be less cons time consuming for everybody else oh ah -hoo, that's awesome uh so uh would you what would you recommend so we've been looking at um so we were trying to get familiar with uh the differences between the nouns and the differences between the pronouns and the relationship to the verbs and so we, we figured out that we really have to kind of just memorize the pronoun charts is what we came up with after two weeks of trying to figure out how where to start. So when you're saying making the space recording, space repetition recordings, which resource is the best place to start? Because that was that's another thing is like, can we just go on study stacks and go through those? Or uh, I would say the another resource, like what would you recommend? What slide number, that type of stuff? Okay. Um now I have to let me let me see if I if there's a grammar slide. I want to see what grammar slide I do have in there right now, because um, there's old ones and new ones, and I don't remember which ones are in there because they get changed so much. And every semester yeah. we go up here. So let me go into the drive. And now you should I... be able to share your screen too if you want. Um, but yeah, that's that would help us because um, we were looking at all the materials in the drive and then looking at study stacks and we just, you know, it's a lot. So if you could kind of just recommend where we could start, especially to make those spaced repetition recordings, that would be helpful. Okay, let me see. I think this is it, okay. Number two. Camera-wise, 2003. Okay. Okay, so of course, if you're looking at it now, I'm looking at it through... Okay, I don't know what just happened there. Hold on. That's where we found it, halfway down level two. 
Yeah. Because it said level one and it was confusing us. And then I think Melody went further down and it had level two in there. Okay. Okay. Um, let me see if it still has the pictures in here. Okay. So you probably have to go through and put the English for these in here so that so all these pictures right here. You might want to type in what the English is in there, however you want to end up saying them. So level two also includes this as well. So level one is just focusing on the, all the way to slide 25. But level two focuses on both slide tw all the way to 25 to these over here. So it's really just an addition of nouns that you're putting on here uh, with a lot of these uh for a program now my classes they end up learning them all in the first round but we're not doing we're not really focusing on this anymore at the university this is mostly going to be strictly with uh with uh the teacher trainee stuff because it starts going to grammar so it depends on how y'all decide that you feel the best way to translate it into english there's a free translation way to do it there's a more literal and there's there's a there's something in between so you're probably going to have to decide that between yourselves how you want to set it up because i could set it up one way or another but it might not be favorable to everybody so this is where it's kind of on you and how you understand the language so um we do got these different nouns to represent different patterns of different types. So say, for instance, I'm just going to go with one and anybody on here can uh, just go ahead and, and tell me how they would translate that. So say gunedo. That's my dog. Yeah, so you can put, you can translate everything like that. It's my dog, it's your dog for the next one, it's his or her dog in the next one. And so you'd probably want to put these all in English first. So you already learned how to do that, which is good. Uh, now you can do it for everything else here, where it's going to get complicated. And why did that do that? I did not press that. I think that, okay. What'll get complicated here is when it starts getting to these. So, um, in fact, it looks like it's missing a few. Oh, okay. It's not really missing a few. I know what it is. It's that I do need to do something to kind of clarify this because I, I see what I did here. There is a one, two, and three plums, but the talking about three plums looks like the, exactly like this. So I don't know where I was trying to go with that, but I think I messed up how y'all are going to look at it by not not doing it so I may have to apply this part but at least slides 1 through 25 or slides 16 through 25 you can start putting the English to them in fact if you just want to make a copy of this because these powerpoints are completely free for you to change how you want to you can switch these all just to the English form and you'll have the audio to the right or to the left but at the same time, you can go ahead and keep it written out if it helps you pronounce while you're listening to. Uh, but like I said, you can um, go ahead and see if you can create your own materials off of it. I would start here first. I want to go ahead. I want to go to the next ones are yet. I would start at 16, go to 25 and start putting the uh, uh, typing the English into there. If you need to put it in a different format, you can do it that way, too. And then you can make your recordings from there. But uh, until you do that, and until you put the English portion, the version in here as well, uh, we can't go on to the next step. So that'll kind of be up to y'all. And then after we do that, I'll probably have this cleaned up over here, and then we can go into the next step, which is the other other part of level two. Uh, Day. Um, so that's what I guess a question that we have is, so the reason why we scroll down, because we, we already did these nouns as part of our level one. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to learn some different nouns. And so we had, we started with plums uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And so we were, pra we pra were practicing that and uh, 
so anyway, that's um that was kind of what we were thinking as we would do these ones. But are you saying for level two we can use those other nouns also, the ones above? Yeah, yeah, those are gonna be on there for sure. I mean, you're still gonna work with the ones we worked with before. We're just adding these to it, and then we're just doing it in reverse. Uh, we're doing the uh, English to Kaiwa instead of Kaiwa to English. Oh, okay, that helps. So we need to know all of them. Yeah. Now, getting to know these first in the reverse order is actually going to help you with the rest of these. So if you learn, if you do these first in the reverse order, then you can kind of start moving on to these because this is just a small vocabulary change and it's the pattern change that'll get you. So what it should have here is it should have a third one with uh, with uh, multiple plums. Uh, it should have like one shirt and then a bunch of different shirts and dresses, uh, one house, two house, three house. I see what I did. Um, it says noun singular, but I put a bunch of houses. But no matter how you talk about it, it still sounds like you're talking about one thing. So to get bon. Even if you're talking about pan o to get bon, for some reason you still use get bon. I saw it, even though there might be four of them. You get to get to get bon. There's a certain pattern to it. But I don't want to go. I don't want to go straight into. I don't want. I've, I've taken up a lot of time already. Um, if we want to uh, do a focus on that, I can do it in a separate room. Uh, but I don't want to bore people who, you know, the, the, the ground that grammar portion is not as interesting either. Well, actually, uh, that's 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 the focus of our sessions this month has been the grammar. Yeah. And so that was actually one of the things that we had a question about was um like really drilling down into understanding okay how it's laid out why do we say it this way and and that's why i think it would be helpful to all of us to hear again like what's the difference in the nouns yeah we, we had a discussion and our mentors were trying to help us understand but uh last week we got into a long discussion about like what does it mean to be a long for what does it mean to be like just understanding the different categories i guess um, so anyway, it would help actually to go through this, however you would, in a way that would kind of help us get set on the, on the right foot to start studying. Okay. Um, so, uh, if we were to start out with this plum and I wish I did not take those extra slides out cause that really messed a lot of things up. So I'm, I'm going to re-download it and I am going to modify it so you can visually see the numbers, uh, the number system for it. So um, I can do it as I'm talking right here. Um, let me see. I remember how to download it from here because I don't remember how to. Uh, file. I think if you go to file in that. Oh. Uh, I can just, yeah, I'll just do it from here. Okay. So if you need to take notes or something, you know, if you need to uh, get a, uh, if you need to get a piece of paper or type it out or something, you'll have a few a few minutes to about 30 seconds to get something out. And I'll try to explain how these work as far as pattern system, now the way you explain them in English is not how somebody, a speaker would take them in to be, but the pronoun's still gonna fit that same format. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this right here in dealing with plum. So I'm eventually gonna change this uh, picture, but when you talk about plum, the pronoun sounds like it's gonna do this to it. So visually you see one plum, you see two plums, and then you go back to what looks like one plum. Your pronoun is actually going to look like that. And it's called noun long form because that alago, it stays in that long form. You don't go to ala, which is the short form, which you hardly ever hear that form unless you actually combine it with another word. So in this one, you can say ala, ala named bon, but a lot of people would say that sounds a little bit off. They want to go with alago named bon. Um, for I saw two plums. So that's kind of a 
rough part in there is you actually don't really go to a short form in there, but some may still uh, hear it like that where you actually shorten that back out. Um, so you got one plum, two plums, and then three or more. I know it visually doesn't look like three or more plums, but the way your pronoun is identical to talking about one plum. So uh, let me get a charger real quick because I think my computer's about to go out. So this is that this is the most complicated uh, one that you haven't learned yet. Um, give me a second. I think I left, I left my charger at home, so there's extra one here. Okay, I found another found another charger. Actually, I, I knew I'd left something. Okay. Oh. Okay. So if you want to think of a plum and number, it is going to be, you think of it like talking about a plant, then you're going to think about the regular dual that when you're talking about two things across the board, most of the time when you talk about two things, it's going to be. Oh, it looks like I'd even like change this out, but this does have different sound pieces to it. And it looks like I didn't, I didn't pull them over to the left side to match. So that might be something you'll end up having to do anyway. So if I were to say I saw a plum, a la go de bon. So we'll just go with the first one so you can see the differences. A la go de bon. That could be I saw the plum. A la go name bon. I saw the two plums, but talking about three or more plums, I'm going to go ahead and take the picture out now. It's still a la go de bon. It's identical to talking about one plum. So uh Called a long form, you could say it, it it is that is the long form pronoun you're using with both one plum and many plums. Uh, it goes long form to long form, so long form singular, like a plant does, like your uh, what was the plant that we used up here? The flower. So it goes long form. And we did use the same pronoun as one flower. It uses the same pronoun as two flowers or even two dogs, but it uses the pronoun of many dogs, which is identical to long one flower. It's just this pattern that happens in Kiowa. You can't really get around it. It's that's what happens with plum. If you say a la go no on or a la bon no on, whether you talk about one plum or many plums, it stays the same. It's still stuck in this this set of pronouns, this uh, day bay, day bon. Be bon, a bon, no da, a la go, go da, a la go, a da, a la go, no, a la go, a da. So it kind of stays in the set. If you talk about one plum or many plums, it's just a pattern you have to get about plums. Um, now, I looked in Parker's notes and he said there is a way that, that, um, that you can make something like that because tomatoes actually falls in this class group tomatoes apples plums uh there's certain bit larger fruits that fall into this class but even something like blackberry falls into this category where for some reason when you talk about one it sounds like you're talking about one or it could be talking about a bunch of them and i don't know the reason why that is but that's just the way plum is i think it is the hardest of the new ones that you're going to have to memorize is because 
it has this what this we call it a long form pronoun. It used to be called an inverse. I don't. It feels like it. It feels like no matter what category system we add to it, it's never clear because it has something directly related to how the nouns change and how it ends up flowing out. Flowing out whenever you actually hear it and say it. Uh, so that is the complicated one. Um, when it deals with something like clothing, it's uh, in your glossary, it's, it's called, called a noun plural. So I think it says noun PL, which you don't confuse a noun PL. I'm going to have to relabel it. A noun plant and noun PL are two different things. So when you go to your glossary, you'll see noun plants and you see noun, noun PL dot, which is a noun plural. It's a noun which is always in its plural form, doesn't have any long form pronouns, so it doesn't use it doesn't use these ones like day, bay, a, na, ga, a, na, and a. It doesn't use those pronouns. It uses just like you were talking about a lot of flowers. So if you're talking about a shirt, hold a get bone. If you talk about two shirts, it still stays hold a get bone. If you're talking about three, four, five, six, eight shirts. It's still hold a get bone. Those pronouns stay pretty consistent in there. You don't you don't say hold a name bone. You don't say hold a get bone. It's hold a get bone. Uh, if I wanted you to look at the shirt or shirts or two shirts, I would say uh, hold a bat bone. I can't say hold a bone or hold a main bone. Something about that just doesn't work with it because. I don't know if it's about the material, but I can give you an English. Uh, I can give you an English example of us doing this in English. And it's when we talk about jeans, pants, and slacks. We don't ever say, give me that pant, give me that slack, give me that jean. Not G-A, not G-E-A-N anyway. Um, and we do do that sometimes in English too. Uh, clothing in this, in this case, it falls in the category where your pronoun has to match like it's plural and not the long form plural, the regular plural. Um, and that's this set right here, the gap, but yeah, yeah, yan, an, and like an hold up, get dog. Now these pronouns mean nothing when you say it by themselves. Like I just said it, it's, it's only when they're said with the verb, do they actually make sense? So, um, house is like the complete opposite of what clothing is house. You see a lot of houses here, but you're using pronouns. Like you're talking about one dog. So you say, say gun gebon, I saw the dog. Well, yes, say to gebon, I saw the house. But when you do your pronouns, it doesn't really change. It, it, it's called, we're really calling a noun singular, not based on what the noun's really doing, but what its pronouns are doing. And so whether I put, I'm going to go ahead and make copies of this and I'm going to go ahead and tempor temporarily crop these out and move it up. And then I'm going to crop this out. And move it here. So that's one way to mess with it, kind of mess with it and make it a little bit different. So if you remember, whenever you change from one one dog to two dogs to many dogs, this pronouns change. But when you're talking about a house, it's almost like you're talking about one dog. It's it's using the, it's not like you're talking about one dog, but it, the pronouns you use are exactly the same all the way across. So anything that's labeled noun singular or noun sg, they're easy to use uh, because. Um, you always know that they follow this one pronoun, pronoun set. Get bon, a bon, to bon, to ain't da, who did to get da, to a da. Now, you'd usually pull something in front of here to make that sentence a little bit more clear. But we tried to do that the first time around when we were doing credentialing and adding that fourth word in there just threw everybody out because they were paying attention to the left side, not paying attention to what's being said right here. Um, so when you're dealing with house, same pronoun. Now, uh, if you want to put this in your notes, 
I'll put it like this. Talking about any number of houses is like talking about one dog. So if you can put that in your notes. Talking about clothing and now and plural nouns is like talking about many flowers. Doesn't matter how many you have of them. Uh, clothing, whether it's singular or plural, it's like talking about multiple flowers every time. Um, talking about plums is weird. Talking about one plum is like talking about one flower. Talking about many plums is like talking about many dogs, which is actually identical each other, to each other. The one flower and many dogs shares the exact same pronouns if I talk about Akin got de bon. Akin got de bon. I saw a flower versus segun da de bon. I saw dogs, but they both use de bon. And it has to do with segun da, that longer form. It also has to do with ala da, that short form. Now, if we go back to the original way, it'd probably be a little bit more clear. The only problem that kind of ran into with that is there's a little discrepancy there with actually saying it in real person in real time where uh kind of having a little bit of issues with it so um we do got this last set i'm gonna say the plant tree is probably the easiest because if you know flower everything falls by it uh with tree in the same instance, except for this one right here. When it comes to tree, they are trees. It There's no pronoun that goes with it. It's just, ah, doll, they are trees. That's the only thing that's different about that in flowers. Otherwise, pronoun-wise, akin got de bon, I saw the tree. Akin, uh, ah, da de bon, or ah, da de bon, I saw... The tree, Akin got de bon. I saw the flower, and we'll say, Ah, donen bon. I saw the two trees, Akin got nen bon. I saw the two flowers, and then, Ah, get bon. I saw the trees, Akin get bon. I saw the flowers. It's pretty much this, the second two words are exactly the same. The now plant tree just has this piece where I don't know why it doesn't have a pronoun. It's akin get get da when you talk about flowers, but no pronoun whenever you, when you do tree. It just happens to be kind of an easy one because you actually drop the pronoun. So I'll show you the, what, what I'm talking about right here. When you talk about flowers, the last two words are get da. Akin get get da. There's a there are flowers. When we talk about trees in that same sense. You see it loses its pronoun. There's no pronoun there. Dog is just sitting out there, but there's no pronoun. I don't know why it works like that, but I remember getting corrected a lot of times trying to say the other version of it. I try to say, ah, get dog. And I guess it works for sticks, but it doesn't work very well for trees. It just doesn't sound quite right. And I can't, if anybody can chime in and say why, I can't say, ah, get dog for they are trees. If there's a reason for that, uh, you know, uh, chime in and let me know. But as far as I as far as I know, I remember uh, fifteen years ago getting corrected on that, and I didn't understand why there was no pronoun for they are trees. But that's just the way it said. I don't I don't know why. <laughs> but trees trees you don't have to study on, uh, or noun plant tree. The noun singulars you just got to know they're singular all the time and not the long form singular. Noun plurals like clothing, they're plural all the time. Um, so you talk about them as you're talking about plural, not the long form plural. Uh, so you kind of got to separate the long form plural, long form singular, which are identical uh, from the regular plural. And that has to go with the, I'll go with it up there. Then we got plums. And we'll see if it kind of goes with some of the stuff here. You do see different variations of it right here. Um, if we go through here, if we start at plums right here, a la go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take out normally what I'll be saying. Really, if we're really going by the oldest pattern of how you how they would 
you know, how some would talk about these back in the day. It would be Allah go, Allah, Allah go. So really there was a short thing where they actually cut that off. Some speakers would cut that off and that was a long time ago um, where that would actually be cut off in the sentence. But uh, kind of ran some issues with it there. Anyway, the, the long form is that go at the end. It just happens to be there for the poem. Long, short, if you really want to, you could actually just cut it off so it makes sense to you. I just don't know what the response would be if you started talking, cutting that off. So you can kind of find that out yourself. If you if you take the first Kiowa classes we took at OU, um, they would actually went ahead and cut that off and we would have, we would have used that short form for two plums. And we say, Allah in da, Allah nein bon. Except Allah go nein bon. But, uh, we go to plural nouns, hold up. So you don't treat shirt and dress and t-shirts and certain dress. You don't, you have to treat it like it's a plural. So that's why there's no entries down here. You'll treat it like it's a plural. House, it says treat as singular form. So when you're doing the pronouns that go with it, you can treat it like a singular. Uh, with tree, just know that that one sentence is ah do they are trees. I don't think it affects anything else. Um, then it breaks it up. Which forms of the verb do you treat as long forms for the most part? Akin got ah da Allah go and segun da. Those versions are all long forms to certain nouns that for all all sets of these nouns for this whole entire grammar revision piece. Uh, the only one you treat as the long form human, which we may start calling that long form in crowd because it doesn't always work with all people. Uh, depending on who you talk to, sometimes it's just Kiowa men. Sometimes it can be just Kiowas in general. Uh, even on the KCP, KCP tapes, I've heard it uh, used with Buffalo before. So it depends on who you're talking to. But this is what we're calling a noun, long form human. It's a whole different type of uh, long form. Uh, it's the same, but for some reason, like when you say tape, tape cup, nay, da, you don't say tape cup, na, da. You'd want to do it because if I were to say, ango, I can go, na, da. The, this, this is my flower, or ango, tsegun, da, na, da. These are my dogs. Tape cup has what we're kind of calling the human plural or the in crowd plural, where you're going to have to switch your pronoun up. And it's in it. In this set, it's actually color coded to your pronouns rather than what your nouns are. Now, when it comes to dual and stuff like that, it shows what forms are there for that. You see all these short forms, do de, tsegun, do, akingya. These are all kind of short forms. And you got this plural tree, which is ah, which is uh, kind of real rare that's going on. But, you know, I've got the best visual for this one, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to change this to where it makes a little bit more sense. Um, if you understand what's going on here with these ones, that the shoe, you notice that shoe just does not change its form at all. And so whenever you go with shoe and you cut it down just to the pronouns by itself, if you're talking about shoe, And I don't think it's going to let me click on all of them. It's not. Anyway, you don't use this version right here. So when you do shoe, you don't use this long form version because it doesn't have its long form. You just have to know that you don't use this version on the right. You just use the one on the left. That's the short form version, the regular version, whatever. We haven't got a good label for it right now. Most so, things that are too... I'll all the time, like all the time for shoe, you only use that Less or so. just don't compute. Now for two shoes, you'll use this column right here. Okay, all right. For three shoes, you only use the left side of this column and it looks like it's not color coded. So let me go to the color coded version. Slide three is not no color. Slide four has color coded version. So, uh. So um, if you're talking about dog, one dog, 
it's going to use the 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 one that's colored in black right here because it's just segun there's only one segun if you're talking about two dogs you don't really have a choice here okay now this is called a noun animate and animate noun does have a singular dual and plural way of doing it but when you go to three or more dogs because it does change that segun dog to that longer form huh. you have to use the red Oh, so, okay. I see now. Okay. I hope. So singular, I'm just going to say it in color. Um, Segun, you use the black side. Segun two, two dogs, you use the black part. But Segun da, you start using the red because of that ending, how it, how it, ends, how it ends up changing. Completely reverses for your flower. Akin got, which is longer than Akin ya, actually uses the red side. So this is all Akin got, talking about one flower. Akin got no on. Akin got no do. Akin got go do. All the way down to Akin got be bon. Akin got a bon. Akin got a do. It is a, it is a flower. Now, when there's two flowers, you know, the dual system doesn't really have an effect on that too much because the pronoun you use is more important anyway when you talk about two. So when you talk about two flowers, it just goes back to this black form. Akinga is a short form, so it goes back to this black form. So Akinga starts with that, that long version of saying flower, so you do have to start it out with red, where a dog changes to that long form over here, so they, dog, dogs end up using red and so that's why flower is this red portion right here dogs is this red portion right here and if you ever hear people talking about one flower or many dogs using the same sentence thus um, if you use the same exact pronoun for it this means uh, give me the dogs this means give me the flower and it's just this little system that it kind of throws a wrench into the learning of what's really going on because I can't really explain to you why something is I know linguistically you said something's inherently plural and inherently singular I really don't know what they mean I know what they what they're saying but I don't it's not it, it seems like it's a lot more complicated than that so uh, so now if you're looking at shoe shoe doesn't have those changes with it it uses the black version of everything on these charts one shoe the black side dual you don't have a choice, plural, the black version right here. So that's what we're calling it the default because it doesn't do this long form stuff. That's why the, it's labeled a default noun, even though there's not very many of them that follow that pattern. Shoe, rock, rope. There's a few things, earring. They kind of seem like odds and end type stuff until you get to footwear, where shoe, uh, dodon de, uh, 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 what do you call it? A, a boot? Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, socks. And the tokini, a boot. And there's another one. Uh, tohin, not the tipi, but the uh, moccasins. They end up falling in this class. So there are some patterns to it, and there's some things like rock and earring that they don't. I don't I don't know what the what the basis of them why they're said why they're used certain pronouns or not. They just you kind of have to just memorize that that's what they are. And there's not very many of them that use black all the way across. What about deer? Because it stays the same. So it's an exception to the rule, still an animal. Okay. Uh, okay. It follows just like a just like a dog. You start out with the black side, dual is the middle, but with that one, top no on. Okay. Ah, de bon. It does follow exactly what an animate would. Okay. So that's without uh, you uh, in every language, always the exceptions to the rule. So as long as it's labeled animate, I would say black, black, red. Okay. With a plant, red, black, black. Mm -hmm. um, if it's default, black, 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 all black all the way across. Is it easier to say it this way? I'm glad I put the colors in, I, even though it not, might not be making sense to everybody. It it, it is going to be in oh. the more correct pattern. Um, yeah. Now, here's what Plum does. 
red, black, red. So one plum, you say, no, -uh. give me the plum. I'll all go, no, -uh. got no choice with two. I'll all go, -uh. nay, or I'll all go, nay, -uh. give me the two plums. Go to plural, switch it straight back to I'll all go, no, -uh. I'll all go. Red. Now for something like, like the that. opposite is shoot. No, oh, that doesn't use any of them. Yeah. So yeah. It's shoe, like the opposite. Default uses the uses the black versions of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the plum tomato uses mm -hmm. red where the red is there and it's got no choice for the dual but to use that middle line. Okay. Um now, Parker did say there's one instance in which you actually do use the black line for something that falls in that long form class or the, as if you got different varieties of plums or different varieties of tomatoes or different varieties of apples. Okay. And then you can say, yeah. Uh. Okay. But as far as you had this stuff, yeah. you actually default to this. Now, when you do something that's called a noun singular, singular like shoe, uh, not stop shoe, a uh, house. So there's some random stuff that kind of falls in this category, like house. I did purposely choose house because it's kind of an exception to the rule. But there is one set of things that is singular all the time, and it kind of makes sense, and that's liquids. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, water, milk. Coffee, tea, um, river, um, things that are labeled noun singular actually stay only in this line all the way down in the black side. They don't go to this area. It doesn't go to this area. So when you talk about a river, you stay in this column and you go with the, the ones that are in black. Okay. So it's identical to talking about one shoe, identical to talking about one dog. But it doesn't move anywhere beyond that. This is why talking about water is easy to deal with because if you memorize them, all you have to do is have this part memorized, just like talking about one dog or one shoe. That's it for water or house. Now, so if you talk oh, go ahead. Would you need to say like two glasses or two cups or dishes of water if you wanted to I say? I mean, you can, but then you're talking about dishes. You're not really talking about the water anymore. Okay. And a dish follows plant, the plant rule. And I guess I need to figure out how to how to set this up to where it makes sense in here because it, it shows some stuff, but I can see some stuff where I need to have it. But a dish would go red, black, black. Just like plant, uh, just like plants do. Yeah. But water itself, we're just talking about the water. Okay. It's in the black side on the singular and only in the singular. You don't go to any other line. You stay in this line. And you and stay snow, there. like snow and ice and stuff. Yeah, snow and ice will fall into that too. Yeah. Clouds, mm -hmm. cloud and clouds, cloud and clouds. Those things are easy because you only stay singular with them and you don't do the red side. Mm -hmm. Now we go to the opposite of that. We go to jeans and clothing and and a lot of granular type stuff will kind of fall into this. You could make them singular but for the most part. You kind of treat most of them as plural. Food falls into this plural, this noun plural set. And this is when I'm talking about noun plural, you see this in the glossary when you're looking up terms. It'll say NPL right next to it. It also stays in the black, but on this side. So when you're talking about food, being because it's a mass of something, it's something that you can't really make singular. Give me a food doesn't really, you can't really say that in Kiowa. Um, but if you give me food, it's considered plural. A son is plural all the time. Holda, uh, clothing is plural all the time. Call day, your pants, slacks, jeans, plural all the time. And then we go to stuff like um, salt. 
salt falls into this class, you're only going to use the this row and the black. All time time. Yeah. All. All time time. But boom. Look at the look at the. Uh, you look at the uh, salt. All time time. Get dog. Now here's the problem with the English thing. When you say all time time. Get dog. It is salt, but really you're saying they are salt because you're using this get dog. But it, they are salt doesn't sound right in English, so you want to correct your English. So you, it's it's getting the whole English and Kaiwa thing all kind of mixed up because it sounds better to translate to it is salt. And that's true. That's how you say it in English. But you're using the pronouns for they are for a lot of other things like akinga, get dog. They are flowers. So why is salt akinga, get dog? Well, when we translate to English, we'll say it is salt because that's what we say in English, but you're not the pronouns aren't actually matching up. This is the they pronoun, the plural pronoun, because salt is the granular stuff. So this is where English and Kiowa, they're button heads right here. Um, tree. Now, tree is gonna go just like a just like a flower, red on this on the singular line, black on the dual line, black on the plural line, except for that, except for this part right here. When you use when you say they are trees, dog. That's it. That's that's the only that's the only difference between tree and flower is that one type of sentence when you say they and you don't need to use a you don't have to use it. Now there's other things there that probably follow that. I am guessing that maybe house also has something to do with it. It just easier just put in the pattern of always singular because that's as much as I try, I try to use these other pronouns with some of those when you speak when you talk to any one of them who are speaking here they'll let you know something doesn't sound right about it and they tend to fall in these categories right here that we kind of have put I know it wasn't explicitly written out for you where you can see so we got to find a way to actually put it in other formats and so there's a lot of a lot of us are uh there's a lot more of us who are teachers here. So if you find ways to describe it, um, I think that's where I'm going. That This is where I'm kind of going with our uh, Kiowa classes now on Fridays with the grammar portion. How do I get this to where it's clear and that you know what the relationship between the different types of nouns are to pronouns? and how the verbs play into that and it's the verb pronoun stuff is easy but once we throw in the nouns it should be easy but we got it it's still dealing with this pronoun verb relationship first and i know it hasn't been really it's been glossed over and we need to go a little bit farther into it it's just we need better material for it and really I think that's going to have to do with going back and dealing with the charts and starting to give you all sentences to where you have to actually look them up and see how they make sense. And because it's really the last two words in the Kiowa sentence, the pronoun verb that really give a lot of information and everything else is just extra uh, and kind of gives a context to a lot of things. So, you know, I always feel like this is the boring stuff. I used to not do it. I didn't like to do it back in the day, especially when we we're starting the grant, because I, I knew a lot of people would get away with, you know, try to move away from that. And it kind of scared a lot of people off. So I haven't done grammar in a long time, but um, I understand how it works and I can go into more detail w w with you. But this was just more of an overview of it. I can slow it down to fit, you know, the individual that I'm working with. Oh, uh -huh. this is really helpful. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we talked about, um, maybe it was last week, uh, Aikima said that she's really interested in thinking about how to teach the grammar part to the students. And I think that's something that um, would be worth having a discussion, especially for those of us who are teaching like the high school level, um, to think about how do we what are some strategies to think about the way that we 
get that information across to the students so they understand the differences in you know why certain words are changing in a in a certain way um or how they change i guess but um this was really really helpful and does anyone have questions or comments was one of the things that um Akima was asking last week was it uh like the nouns that when they take a direct object or indirect object and you have and you put the two nouns in the front like which one comes first oh i think I so it's definitely gonna be a question that you're gonna want to ask or um the other elder mentors because whichever one ends up sounding the best to them is going to work now that pronoun is going to take care of a lot of that for mm -hmm. you uh, but if you give them the sentence, like think of a sentence that you're thinking of. So when you talk about indirect and direct object, object, you just make a sentence that has that and see and make it simple, as simple as you can be, where you can hear every single word in there. So let me think about it. Uh, <laughs> get, can you all give me an English sentence that has an indirect object in it? And maybe we can come up with something real simple. Because now we got to go into English and see, okay, since that's uh, <laughs> does ask the question, what's the English sentence? <laughs> mm. What like the dog ran after the cat or saw okay. the cat? So that one just has a, a object that's a two part sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no indirect object there, but indirect objects. Now I will. I can but, tell you from the Kaiwa Kaiwa version what what they are. Uh, three part pronouns have an indirect object in them. Mm -hmm. and well, that, where would you put the two nouns, like the dog and the cat? Um, I, You could do the them two different sentence. ways. I see them two different ways. Okay. You could say the one that did it first, so if the dog saw the cat, dog, cat, it saw it. <laughs> okay. Or you All can right. throw it in at the end. Um, but you got to make some kind of clarification. So uh, this is a good one uh, if you're just talking about just subject and object. Um, let's throw the, let's throw this uh, sentence out there. The dog saw the cat. Uh -huh. So anybody who's a speaker in here, how would you say that? Because I'm trying to come with the easiest simple sentence to to do. But how would you say the dog saw the cat? I know it's only really three words. But what order, how would you say that? How would you, how would you feel that somebody would say that? Well, the second bow would say, oh, bow. Okay. So you start off with the uh, one that's doing it, what they're doing it to, and then you okay. finish what, what's, what's happening. So, and I've seen that yeah. as the most. Uh, okay. As the most common way to do it there's other times that people do it too but you know when they start putting stuff at the end it also feels like it's a side note of something they wanted to add in there real quick at the end and we do that in english too like sometimes i'll I'll, you know, I'll talk and i'll talk about and i realize i didn't clarify myself so um i was looking at it and then i'll throw in the dog because i realized that i didn't say enough information mm -hmm. so i was looking at it over there um that dog so when people throw mm -hmm. it at the end, it sometimes a lot of feels like it's it's just because it's only the extra information to clarify the sentence mm -hmm. that they said. Which is something okay. we do in English too. But okay, I guess here's another one because I she did say the indirect object. So and this is talking about all third person. So that has nothing to do with you and me or anything. Mm -hmm. But in the sentence. And I'll, I'll try to keep them like really simple stuff. Uh, the man gave the woman a horse. The man gave the woman a horse. Now we're dealing with three nouns. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, hey. Okay. All right. I see it. So now we have the doer, the receiver, 
and then the thing that they're transferring, whatever that object is, seems to be coming right before the pronoun. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Ah. Uh, uh. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Uh, uh, okay. It's saying ah. Uh, uh, she gave it to, or he uh, gave it to okay. her, and then all the when you're saying can he my he, what all that's doing is clarifying who who's actually doing it. Mm hmm. But what they're doing it to your your actual object in there is the horse. Mm -hmm. Now your mahi, that's what they're calling the indirect object. She's not doing anything in the sentence, but she is the receiver, which makes her an indirect object. Mm -hmm. uh, the horse is they're having something done to it. So it seems like in the most common way that these are going, and you see this in a lot of writing, is that whatever is the whatever object or thing that actually the action is being done to is what comes right before you actually say the pronoun or part of the sentence. Dane, there's a question in the chat. Let's see. Should man and woman be replaced with names? Yes, all. So she's my nephew and nieces. Uh, James Lily saying, I own. You can just throw the names in there. You treat names just like you're talking about to the uh, person or okay. just like you're talking about anybody else. So names will take the place of a noun. Basically, a, a noun, a, a name is a noun. So if you do... Uh, so if you really want to go down to this uh, object, it's always important to know what your object is. Uh, sometimes the object will be named earlier, like in a story, but then you do subject and object, subject noun, object noun. So that's the next step. But if you got an indirect object, it's subject noun, indirect object noun, which is usually the receiver. And then object noun, which is the thing being transferred to them. Um, I'm thinking of a common one that you hear. Now, this one's a little bit, there's abstract, uh, but I can kind of name the stuff in there. Uh, yan ta om, whenever they say ask for help, that is a three part, and there are three parts to that in there. You're, but some of them you can't really name in there, although you could to clarify certain things, but you don't have to because it's already clear on its own. Help me. So, your doer in there is who you're talking about. So you're talking about dog E. That's your doer. That's the part. Normally, that'd be the first one in there. But since you're talking to him, you don't need to. Eat. It's more of a command. You don't need to say names in there. But that's your that's your subject, uh, dog E. But you don't explicitly say his name. And you could say dog E. You can call to him and then, you know, say a prayer, tell him to help you. Uh, your indirect object is, is the is the me part. So that's what three parts are. Uh, me, so that's your third part, but you actually don't write that in there, but that's the, that is your indirect object is me. Your subject is, is dog E. And then your object in there is actually the help. It's an abstract type thing. It's plural, that ya is a plural pronoun. And ta om is something you can't hold, you can't really see help. So it, you have to go with an abstract type thinking and abstract type things like help, like subject matter. Um, if I say biology, that's something that's more abstract. You can't hold a biology. I can't step on a biology. It's something that's, it's those types of things automatically go plural, not long form plural, regular plural in Kiowa. And so because I, now, now that I understand that better, I automatically just go that to the default for things like that. And now I understand why when you say Yan Tom, three things going on. Dog E is doing something, it's happening to me. And what's the what's the object? And the object is to help, which you don't really have a way to actually show it, but it's just part of that sentence that shows up as a plural. That's not really good on the noun part. I wasn't really good at example on that one, but that's why we used 
the man gave a woman a horse. So man, woman, horse, he gave it to her. Oh, that helps. Now, there are sometimes ways that you can throw the object into your mirror, but I mean, it takes a little bit more, more thinking about it. I feel like sometimes when you start throwing, when you learn how to th uh, throw stuff into the object, now I want to do that until you understand this other stuff, this uh, other stuff first. But it makes the word prettier sounding, I would say. The more stuff that you figure out how to put into the verb, and it's kind of hard to do. And the ones who can really do this, everybody here that's older, that's heard it, things like that being said, or these verbs get pretty long, but it's the way it comes out when you combine them together sounds really good. But learning from English like we, we're doing, sometimes it's hard for us to put sentences together that way because then you got to really understand your pronouns and how they work and, and what you're talking about without it seeing it change on the left side, but you're throwing it in and you already know how it goes together. Oh, oh. Now I can do a session where we do use that pronoun stuff because I, I just feel like if there's one thing that's real easy to teach about grammar at the very, it's very simplest level, where you can come and, and start kind of, you know, kind of building your own sentences. And that's teaching them how to use the pronoun chart. And it's going to, it's going to take using the glossary and it kind of forces people to use the glossary a little bit. And I can teach that to students in a class within two or three sessions. It's much easier to do it in person, but it can be done. Everybody has a good base in here to know how to do that. So yeah, I could go over that in some some form of this class or in this period. That'd be really good. I think that would really help us, um, especially since getting this grammar, getting a handle on the grammar stuff is something that we're all really interested in and we really want to do the level two. <laughs> so anything that will help. Because I know I'm not going to be ready to do level two grammar by Saturday, so <laughs> I need more practice. Oh. Any other questions, comments for Dane? Oh, ho, that was very helpful. Oh, very, you, very helpful. Kind of helps you to see what's coming. As far as sentences, appreciate it. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, um, I, I forwarded that email to everyone that was on here and then whoever's been joining our sessions. So you all should have the email from Dane with the Zoom information uh, for if you, if you need to join virtually. Um, and then uh, the in-person and virtual credentialing is on this Saturday. Starting at 10, you said? Yeah, starting at 10. Yeah. 10 to 2. Okay. Awesome. Um, so it sounds like, Dane, you'll be able to join us uh, more frequently this spring. Oh. <laughs> okay. Nice, because uh, I feel like, you know, it's a lot of good information and we'll kind of take it back and kind of look through, you know, I'm going to look at that PowerPoint and see about making myself some space repetition recordings. But um, I, I definitely know that we want to just, you know, continue focusing on the grammar part until we feel like we have a really good handle and we're ready to to move on to another step in the credentialing. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, this is super helpful. So. Whenever you're able to join us again, um, whether it's next week or the week after, um, we'd love to, you know, continue more of the grammar pronoun discussion, just whatever you think would be helpful 
for us as teachers as we kind of move into that and figuring out for ourselves so we can kind of internalize it? Uh, I can give you a heads up so it won't take up so much time and so it'll be easier to manage. You do got some verbs in there that already, um, that pretty much already cover everything in there. There's not very many of them. There's da, there's on, and then there's a uh, bon. So that covers most of what you can use on most of those pronouns. Now, some of the smaller ones, I'll have to add in another one. There's the weird one where you say, uh, bot ho I, bot kope I, this I word. It has its own, it has a set of pronouns and it does look like another chart. It's just translating it to make it fit that chart. It's, it's, it's one of these abstract things that I've never made sense of. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use four of them just so you can hear them. You got aim uh where you where a means you, besa which means you sit yourself down. So in my class, I, I translate it. You translate it as you in free translation, but in our classes, I make say you to yourself. I do make them differentiate it because it is different the way it works. We say, uh, you telling somebody to go out, go go run off or go run. Bot cope I. So bot is the you in there. And I don't have a really good way to translate that for you except for you, but it's not the same you as aim. It's not the same you as bay. And then the last one is uh like in ha he go yan hai get do. Then do you understand the yan means you, but you kind of got an idea of you actually seeing that in other areas. So you kind of see where it gets a little bit complicated. But anyway, we'll stick with just the verbs that we have there. And then later on, we'll, we can add more verbs there. Awesome. <laughs> ha. And I think that's something that we had uh, discussed. Uh, when was it? I can't remember if it was last session or two weeks ago. Um, where someone asked like how many how many uh ways to say like I like me or I um and we were like huh this is probably like a whole bunch of them we started listing it off kind of like that so yeah we yeah it's, I think it's, it's English has it too simple I mean it has it simplified in a certain way where you just kind of use it which is probably why people over the world pick it up faster and really all those eyes in there are I there's more than just I you're saying I did something I did one I did two I did a bunch of things I did myself there's actually a lot more going on so yeah at least we're not Athabascan languages they're much harder to have to deal with Kai was easy compared to them Kai was easy compared to Apache so it's not easy, but it doesn't have all that crazy stuff in there. Long words. Okay, yeah, we got one that's a uh, Bobby. I like to, our in person class at D7 so we can match up schedules to have a pronoun class. Yeah, I'd be willing to do that one. I'd be really willing to do a real in-person class where we get to actually sit down and show them and show everybody and we can kind of switch up locations. I think that would be good. And I think that would, you know, we can also count that as part of our stuff for our credentialing meetings because that's, it's important, especially if we end up having to miss something. So I would be willing to do that if we can get an in-person class and we can get a few people in there. And we can actually do these. We can knock about. We could probably knock out what would take three or four sessions and into one session. I, I'd I'd really like to. I I would do that in person. I would definitely come down and do grammar stuff in person. I think it's better in person than online. But you know, I'm gonna try to do my best with the online stuff too. And the charts are really aren't that bad. So I've seen that the charts actually aren't that bad. They're actually pretty easy to use once once you just kind of match them down. It's memorizing them, which is really hard. That'll take a long time. That's entirely the rest of those charts is it's entirely up to what you want to do. 
but learning how to use them was pretty easy. That baby's so cute. Yeah. Oh, she's a handful right now. <laughs> oh, she is. Just, just keep her up on the screen. She's too cute. There she is. <laughs> Look at her. I know. She's interested. She's been uh, going to these classes with me. So Look at her. Oh, okay. She's so cute. <laughs> um, Dane, this was extremely helpful. I hope. You know what? I got some materials. I might bring some for the, uh, I might bring some on Saturday, you know, just to kind of get it started. We do have a little bit of time. I can probably go over them. Um, but that's, uh, uh, yeah, now you got me thinking about that because I'm changing my classes to that too. And well, it'll help me up here as well. So what we're saying is, um, so we have all the nouns. And that's what we're doing, like second levels, but and but we're only working with three of the verbs, and then, um, but there's like no two of the verbs, or is it three? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. it's three of the verbs, and so yeah. what you're saying is we have two more. That yeah, means, I mean, for your, for your level two, you're not, we're not really messing with those, but that's, yeah, that, that'll cover all the charts. Okay. okay. And I'd be willing, I'll be that's... willing to teach those and beyond what we're doing. Just, okay. So that y'all are. But that's helpful to think about, like, so we have, like, in the um, pronoun chart or grammar chart you've made for us, you kind of have a, most of the, all the nouns covered with the, all all gone and the tho and the um thode and the uh you know the defaults and all that and oh. you know so that's what but but what you're saying is we still have some ver you know a couple more sets of verbs to cover cover and pronouns yeah as well and they're as, not that big of a deal the other okay. verbs uh it just gave you the ones that are that that tend to have the most stuff going on so is, is scared one of those AI verbs? If you say go eight, I like if somebody takes off like frightened. Or, uh huh. You know, it's the I part, that verb part at the end is the one that's causing that. It's not really the go eight, the go eight and go eight I when you say uh, -huh. uh get go eight I uh they took off. Uh the go eight, the fearful part or the scared kind of that scared part, sounding part. That's mm -hmm. just a description of what kind of I that is. Oh, okay. It's the I part and it tends to only be with that verb. There's nothing other verb that actually really does it like that. So you say ho I took off driving, drove off, hope yeah, cope bay I I ran off. Yeah, go ahead I I took off scared. Uh there's other ones of that, but it's all related to that one, one word. Okay. And you'll see it in stories and stuff. And when, when uh -huh. you see it, it's like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I know what that yeah. is. Yeah. Is there a, is road that ho I, is it like if you're, is that the same as horse and? Yeah, you can use it for writing. Ho know, I, okay. Yeah. Is there a fly off? Piho. <laughs> yeah, get piho. Get piho. I took off my wings and they flew off. I guess. I uh, guess maybe okay. you could say with planes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you call a plane.
Okay. Oh, that. Okay. I was, th I was thinking doghouse. What about doghouse? Just had to say that. I see doghouse. I saw a doghouse. Uh, so dog would become your describer connected to the word house. Segun to. So you got a one word, but to is still your main noun in there, which is a singular. Segun to. Uh, dog. It's a dog house. Segun to get bon. I saw the dog house. <laughs> I guess we could, I mean, I don't think combinations are really hard to do, like compound stuff. You just have to know your vocab. You just got to have a, a vocab and you'll be able to put stuff together. I actually don't think it's that hard. It's not always in reverse. Sometimes it's just the way you do it in English, too. Sometimes you can do it either way. No, you took her away. <laughs> She's so cute. You're heavy. <laughs> I think that helped me earlier when they asked the questions about the uh, indirect object because I didn't think about that for so long. Uh, with the examples we heard, I would have tried to end up saying it the way it was, but that confirmed it a little bit more whenever Miss Harrigan was telling us how to say, you no know, how what the automatic way of actually saying that with that much information in there is. Oh. Very helpful. Now let's just go memorize. <laughs> make Make our space repetition recordings. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, probably our uh, first uh, task this week. <laughs> what? Um, could we go on that? Uh, the um, what is it called? The steady stacks, and I want to see that bottom, that thing that you went on the bottom, like and it had it all listed all instead of the flashcard. Oh yeah. Um, here I can uh. Yeah, share my screen really quick. Um, uh, let's see. Which remind me which one we were was it? It was level two. Was it the long form? Right, I think. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, but it should have it just the underneath it. Yeah, where, right. Where here. did you go to? You just scroll down. Oh, just keep scrolling down. Okay. That's yeah, right here. And then uh, I went to print and then did it pop up a window? Mm -mm. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. So it'll, it'll pop up um, if you go to print it. Okay. And I think I put, um, a version of that in the chat last last week, but um, I can send it out also. Oh, where is it? Now I gotta remember where I saved it. <laughs> where go? The noun. Oh, here it is. I think I put it in the chat. Someone click on it and tell me if you can access it. It's a PDF. Oh, yeah. Is that is that big enough? I it's like a, one, it's one page. So I open it up. Kyla. Okay. It should say know. level two long form on the top of the page when you click on it. Okay. Let me, uh... okay. Oh yeah, it, it did it. It worked. 
I just had to download it. Yeah. Onto my gotta, desktop. Yeah, I have to click it twice. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Ah, oh, I like that. Oh. I like it. So uh let's see. This is for the plum. Mm -hmm. But what was the other word? What what are the other words in the uh shirt? Shirt. Um I think we must have been on something else, not that one. So it wasn't long form. Maybe it was singular. Level two singular, maybe. Well, we were on the plum. That's that's what we oh, were, we were? On last. That's when okay. well, the week before that, that's what we were working on. That's the plum. Oh, okay. Uh, so singular is house. Oh no. And so it's right here. Uh huh. Is house is in that lower part of the PowerPoint, right? Oh. Um. And then what did you say the other one was? Uh. Shirt. Shirt. Is that the plural. Oh, here it is. Yeah, plural. Um. So it's right here. So you just scroll down. And then. We were nice and then you can print it i don't remember how i got it to maybe if i hit oh i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i did but anyway you'll probably have to mess around with your printer settings to get it to go on one page when you put it in a link it it, it worked Yeah, I don't remember how I got that, but but anyway, that's uh, if you just scroll down, you could probably screenshot it too, and print yeah. the screenshot. And tree, is tree on there? Oh, and tree. Let's go look. Where's the tree at? Oh, I also didn't put the noun categories in the there very clearly. them, but I did put them in the uh, chat just now. I feel like I'm missing one, but. Those are the noun categories. Oh, for level two? Yeah. So mm -hmm. they all have their patterns. And all those patterns do fit in there. If you got any questions about them, what they mean, because some of them are, uh, I have them. So here's from... default. And you would go to the level one. Uh, it's uh, this level one default nouns. And then what's that next one? Plant. Right here, level one. Plant nouns. And then flower. All the flower phrases. So, Dana, is this what you were saying? Uh, we would, oh. if we customize our own, like, materials to study on the, using that PowerPoint? This, yeah. This is what we could use for the English? Yeah, so you could say, uh, say for instance, I, I press the record button right now. I say, flower, I saw it. Or I saw the flower. You can actually say the English way, whatever way works best for you. Uh, flower, I saw it. I can go de bon. Now, you, uh, you're going to want to leave six seconds after it so it doesn't rush into the next thing. So six seconds after you say it in English, six seconds after you say it in Kiowa, uh, that gives you time to think. Mm -hmm. oh. Versus if you just cut it off right afterwards and it says, let's say flower, I saw it. And then you say, I can got de bon flower, you saw it. And then you know, it doesn't give you time to even. Oh, you know, okay. Now. And here's the dog ones. That's a lot longer. I'm trying to figure out how how I got it to print last time. Um. Okay. What was the next category? Plant, animate, uh, plural. Plural, like shirt, hold it all. So would that be this one, the level two then? Yeah. Okay. And then singular, 
So house this one. House. And then long form is the plum. Oh, that's and cool. then okay. plant tree. So where's that one at on the study steps? I don't the plant tree, the last noun category. I wonder if we even showed up on there. Uh, let's see. Uh, What's the Kiowa grammar level two? I mean, after he finishes. Wait, what's that? Um, and um, so, wait, see. Hold on, let's see. Kiowa well, said something about Kiowa grammar. Kiowa grammar, anim, animate, animate, or animal singular nouns. What was that? Was that what we went over last week? Oh, right uh, here? It, it, might, it, it might be the house, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it's without the Kiowa in it. So the ones that we want to look at are the ones that say Kiowa NVP. Because those are the ones that have the, the Kiowa and the English on the flashcards. So the okay. one we did last week was that we did the long form, which is plum. Okay. Um, I don't see, unless, Dane, there's something else that we need to search. I don't see the plant tree. I might have to make one. Um, maybe it's I didn't. Level one. Would it be level one or what level would that one no, be? No, it, it would have been level two. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for level two, two, plural, long form, the animate human. I don't see it in there. So I have to make one for it. Okay. I didn't realize I didn't have it in there. So, um, jumping over to the other stuff, we, we talked about, um, like the uh reading reading yeah. the story um and then just like conversation like uh Jeez. like us talking back and forth with each other and then this for the grammar and so then um not just answering questions right so when we do conversation it's going to be conversating with each other or are you guys going to talk to us in English and then we have to talk back in Kiowa or how does that work? Or is it just uh, more like, is it all going to be in Kiowa when we do the conversation part and it's just more like um, us eliciting more responses from, from you guys, from the board um, so that we can have more of a con conversation instead of us just answering because that would be us just answering as level one, then level two is eliciting uh, more conversation from y'all. Is that level two? Uh, yeah, um, I think quite a few of you actually have more of a level two one when you did the first one, because we did do some yeah. re, re changing around with it. So I think you probably already got the level two version of it. Okay. I, I do have it in a folder for you. So I don't think you have to worry about that. And I'm pretty sure you don't have to because you already okay. did it. What we did make the change to is when we kind of got, got a request of, well, do we know if they even know what we're saying? And so we did change it this summer to where level one is we do parts of a conversation as if it's a conversation and they, and they have to actually translate it to us into English. So we know that they can follow along with the conversation. Oh, okay. That's the new change. So That's there's a lot of y'all that have done that have done the level two part because now we've some some things got a little bit harder in some parts and some things is like oh okay you already did this portion now that's level two that's oh. a next step to it and okay. so yeah and so then um the next question was the um kinship and the kinship was you will say it in. English and then we say it in Kiowa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we, I just pick out one per family member. So, um, you know, the first one I said all, all the, all the different ways you say it, or at least the first three choices, and you gave the answer. And if you needed a hint, then I do the calling to form or the reference form, which okay. is the forms that people hear today. That's why I didn't start with those. Like with okay. uncle, I didn't start with Segi because I. 
Okay. I knew they were not familiar with the other three. The other mm -hmm. one, I then you say, uh, what was it? I would say, my aunt, and you have to say, my aunt. Okay. I would say, calling to grandpa, and you had to say, Cone or calling to grandpa. Okay. So you'll say, uh, will you, is it all going to be my, or will you also have your in there? Well, you ha you'll have three of them. You'll have my, your, his, okay. her, and the calling to form. Your. The one where you have two, a little bit of choices with the my forms, because you could technically oh, use the two. reference form. You could say no, saw, or okay. no, goy, because you can kind of use them about the same. One doesn't have the word my in it, but uh, um, in a sentence, it still gets almost translated the same way. One has the word mine, one, one sounds more like their name. So it's versus saying mom, uh, mom talked to me yesterday versus my mom talked to me yesterday in, in English. He just throws the word my in it. Oh. In Kiowa, when you say mom talked to me, you say as if that's her name. And so you kind of got a different, slightly different way of saying it. Okay. You got a shower, son. Wash your hair. My your. Did you hear me? What I say? Okay. Don't forget. What are you supposed to do? Okay. Um, what are you supposed to do? All right. I will say something about that reference form that we're talking about too. That doesn't have the word my in it. It follows the same thing as uh, as uh, naming name patterns to uh, when you're talking about uh, people's Kiowa names. I'll use some ones that people have like heard. <laughs> When you okay. do say say tying day, you have that day at the end. If uh -huh. somebody was calling to him by name, they would drop the day. So most people that have day in their name, a lot of times you would drop that off to shorten it out when you're calling to them. Um, same thing with the I, the E sound at the end. So although we know uh the name of Sedangya sitting mm -hmm. there, when they talk about them, say so they say Sedangyai. That's like a reference form as you're talking about them. So these same patterns oh. come over and over. They carry over to your family terms. Gakoi has that I at the end. Um, but then it carries over to the other one where you say uh, uh, Talyoi. Mm -hmm. It's talking about them. That I'm trying to think of another one. Borote. Mm -hmm. Setonde. You know, just... Talking about them, then you add the days and the e's and. Okay. Okay. But for the my forms, you can use either. That's that's acceptable because you use them close to the same way. So, can you give me one one more example about how you would ask? Um, would you just say? Your uh let's go with your uh your niece. And so then I would say, like I'm I would have to say your niece. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, you would do the, the literal Okay. Um, so your your niece, and then you say my and you would say my niece, then I would have to say what I would have to say my niece, right? Yeah. Is that correct? And, and okay. Go ahead and make it fit your. Uh, you make go ahead and make it fit. Uh, uh, my gender. Yeah. So okay. if you say your, okay. say it to fit yours. Don't say it to fit mine because. Uh, okay, my I'm gender. Get the literal version of it. Okay, my gender. Okay. All right. So my gender. Okay. So my, your, his, her, and call to or. And then my can also be referring to. Yeah. Okay. Because what's going to happen later on whenever it comes to uh, the family terms won't be their own separate thing anymore. And level three, it'll be inserted into the interview for level three. Okay. So it'll just be part of the questions for the level three interview. So um, it'll ask about different family members. Um, and... You may or may not have to know the male's versions of it, but it'd be good if you did, just in case we end up asking a question like that. There's ways to get around it, how phrases and things like that. But, uh -huh. okay. but that's level three. We haven't even quite figured out how we're going to do that. It's just going to be a longer yeah. interview, a lot more stuff to say. Let's just get through level two first. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. That's cool. Also, if there any if there's anybody with NVR that hasn't turned in their hours for December, their final hours for December, I need them. Okay. I have to say this was extremely helpful. All of it. Oh, very timely. Definitely mm -hmm. needed. It. it makes your mind think about what what you need to know and kind of organize it a little bit because I felt really unorganized. I feel a little bit more organized now in my thoughts. Oh, and we have a, a target. Oh, shoot. I didn't even look at the time. It's a quarter past nine. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. Um, any last uh, questions to get ready for Saturday from anyone before we log off? Oh, no. Stop holding. I'll try to bring some grammar stuff. Maybe, maybe we can explain something that would be pretty easy to you uh, individually so we can start going to that direction. Oh, all right. Awesome. Well, uh, probably wrap up. Um, let's see. Uh, Miss Velma, are you able to close us out? They don't say. Oh, <clears throat> dog e dog i beg your dog e. A more dog eat other dog eat. They own, <clears throat> they own, they get oil tanks so on, yeah, quite don't get a dog eat. They own, they don't tie dog or the tie dog, they don't dog eat. Um, they own, they don't tie dog or the tie dog, get old dog eat. Get my oil bit on, I'm paid. I got the um they told it oh dog he dog a lim dog hon hon the yan my oi be dom oi the pay the con they they key that ban in town dog book dog e a ho de cog the dog cycle they own the um and get town um and get told you um Okay, hope to get daddy, I'll be good at all. Moggy ain't daddy. Uh, I thought it was okay. I'm Tom, Tom. I'm good at all. So, like, I'll be tired of it. Those, the homeless people, pray that you would watch over them. Sound or a dog, be or a dog. Those who are incarcerated, Lord. So many people. Dog, eh, I'm Tom. Tom, yeah, a on dog, dog, eh, my eye be dog. They own, they, I'm, I'm, um, I'm ho on tie. They told you, dog, eh, yeah, they, um, it's all they come, they, I'm, they, 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 Pray, Lord, that you would bless each individual who's participating. You know what their needs are, Heavenly Father. Pray that you would uh, bless our families. We're so thankful that you, you have blessed us with uh, Dane and uh, our elders mentors lord thank you that we're, we're we're struggling but we're really trying to to keep our language lord 
here. And we're so grateful that you've blessed us with this opportunity, Lord. And we're so grateful. Thank you for thy grace and thy mercy, thy unconditional love and compassion, thy, thy forgiveness, Lord, and thy healing power. And once again, I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the many, many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you for protecting us, keeping us warm and providing food for us and, and being with us giving us the strength, Lord, and for protecting us. We're grateful for, for all that you do for us. And thank you for Melody. She just, she's just, um, she gets all this together for us. And we're so grateful that you've blessed, blessed her in so many ways, Heavenly Father, and the, the gift that she has. Also, Dane, so grateful that you've blessed them. And, and, uh, and then and they're sharing what they've learned being of service to you by sharing with all of us. And we're so grateful that, that, that you, you love us so much that, that you, you bless us in so many ways. And, um, oh. 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 Awesome. Good well, one, guys. With that, great session, very productive. Um, so we got a lot of practicing to do. So hopefully we'll get to see everyone Saturday, um, hopefully on Zoom or in person. And uh, yeah, good luck. And happy practicing, and uh, I'll get the recording posted um, here in the next day or so, and then um, so you can reference it. And yeah, good luck. We'll see what happens on Saturday, and then otherwise we'll see you uh, next week on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.